Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the City of Douglas uh, regular meeting, July 24th, 2017. At this time, uh, we'll turn over the introduction of the invocation to Commissioner Olivia Pilsch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, tonight, we have with us Reverend Theodore Braswell, pastor of Graham Chapel Christian Methodist Episcopal Church in Brooks County, Georgia. Uh, Reverend Braswell, if you would go to the podium and you like to read a scripture or a quote of scripture and then give us prayer however you like to do it. Okay. Good evening. Thanks for inviting me. Well, uh, thank you for coming. I want to share a word with you about working together. The Bible talks about two are better than one. For one fall in a ditch, the other one will pull him out. It also talks about getting wisdom. That's the principal thing. But in all you're getting, get a good understanding. And most of the time, the reason why committees and commissioners fall apart because really we're saying the same thing and we don't have a good understanding. But if we get a good understanding of each other, we all can get along. And get with wisdom the principal thing. We get a good understanding of this thing. It's always better to, to work together. Uh, if two walk together and agree, they can accomplish something. Yes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come tonight in the most humble manner that we know how, we come first thanking you, Lord, for bringing us thus far. Sometimes we was right and sometimes we was wrong, but you brought us. Sometimes saying things we shouldn't have said, but yet you brought us. Sometimes we was even in places where we shouldn't have been in, but you brought us. And we come to say thank you. We come now, Lord, praying for this city commissioner that they will work together in unity. Give them a mind, God, to work together and do the things that is right for this city. We ask God that you fill them with our Holy Spirit that we have a spirit of truth. And we thank you, Lord. And if there's any sick among us, Lord, we pray, God, that you heal them right now. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray that the saints of God say amen. Amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. amen. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Next, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would like to officially welcome back the Coffee County Navy Junior ROTC. This evening with us, uh, leading us in the play, is going to be Commander Metz, Lieutenant Junior Grade Morales, and Ensign Beam. Would you please stand and place the flag, please? Next on the agenda, you will see we have the minutes from July the 17th, but we've already placed that on the consent agenda. If you would, please uh, strike that. That'll be item number four. Next, uh, entertain a motion for the approval of the order of the agenda. So moved. Second. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Our agenda is set. Next, we have uh, the Hall of Fame presentation to uh, the Roper family. So, Picture of uh, Mr. Roper and 
presentation that the Georgia Municipal Association, uh, the Hall of Fame, John Lee Roper Sr., City of Douglas, June 2017. Uh, Mr. Roper was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, in June as one of the distinguished not only statesmen uh, for the city of Douglas, but for the entire state. So it's a very high honor, the highest honor bestowed upon an elected official. So on behalf of the city of Douglas, thank you very much. I'm sure Mr. Roper would be very proud of this. Thank you all so much. I'm sorry I couldn't make it. But thank you all for receiving it. Thank you. agenda we will have the second reading of the revision of the city marshal ordinance and that will be our city attorney they again they were playing a trick on me hit him huh? <laughs> all right this will be the second reading you'll take action on this tonight mr mayor <coughs> This being ordered by the Mayor and Board of Commissioners of Douglas and regular meeting and assembly in pursuit of the lawful party thereof, the C of Douglas Division is amended and stands amended as follows. C Marshal there is hereby established the position of, of the City of Douglas Code Enforcement Officer of the City of Douglas Marshal Office. Duties and responsibilities, the primary duties and responsibilities of the City Marshal shall be as follows to enforce all ordinances enacted by the Mayor and the Commission. To enforce all laws, rules, and regulations of the state of Georgia, to issue warnings, notices of ordinance violations, citations for court appearances for the violation of ordinances of state law, to investigate and collect evidence of any city ordinance violations, to investigate and collect evidence of violations of state laws, to respond to complaints of alleged ordinance violations or violations of state law, to appear and testify in court, do any follow up work that may be necessary, to coordinate off, uh, enforcement efforts with the Building Inspection Office, Planning Division Office, Public Works Department, and any other department or division of the City of Douglas as may be deemed necessary. Often read for the first time at a regular meeting of the Mayor Board of Commission of the City of Douglas on July 17, 2017, and read for the second time on July 24th at a regular meeting of the Mayor Board of Commission after properly advertising the captain and acquiring the charge of the City of Douglas, Georgia on July 24, 2017, and this is ready for action. Outstanding. Thank you. At this time, I will entertain a motion. So um, moved. Second. <laughs> it's been motion and second. Any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda, we will actually have the swearing in of our city marshals. Come on. <laughs> so, never sworn in any marks. <laughs> First time. Now, y'all know I'm a law bad citizen. All right, if you would please. Oh, oh, I'm sorry.
do swear or affirm that I will truly discharge the duties of the marshal of the city of Douglas and that I will faithfully perform and discharge the duties of my position consciously and without malice or partiality to the best of my ability. I do further swear that I am not the holder of any public money due to this state or any other state or political subdivision unaccounted for in of the foreign states and I am otherwise qualified to hold said office to which I am appointed and so and for so as long as I am employed with the city of Douglas Marshall office according to the Constitution and laws of Georgia and I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and of the state. I do further swear or affirm to obey, to adhere to, to uphold and to enforce the laws of the United States of America and of the state of Georgia at all times. And do further swear or affirm that I will bear faith and allegiance to the governor of the state of Georgia, the league, the legal appointed over me by the city of Douglas, and the office appointed over me according to the law. So help me God. Outstanding. Congratulations. agenda we have the second reading of the mayor's youth council ordinance again that will be <clears throat> excuse me our city attorney mr adams okay bill ordained by the mayor and council member of douglas and regular me a symbol of pursuant to lawful authority there of the mayor's youth council of douglas georgia is as follows there is created a board to be known as the city of douglas mayor's youth council which shall consist of nine members serving as an advisory youth council to the city of douglas mayor and commission. The youth members will be city residents who are actively enrolled in public, private, or homeschooling grades 9 through 12 between the ages of 14 to 19. The youth members shall be appointed annually by the city commission and each member by one four-year term at which time the position shall be declared vacant. Unlike other boards, the terms of the members will expire in August and be appointed in September or October of each year. The commissioners will attend board meetings along with staff and coordinate activities. The youth council shall elect the chairman to conduct meetings and the vice chairman to conduct meetings in the absence of the chairman. Elections shall be held at the first regular meeting after annual appointments are made by the city commission. Irregular vacancies on the youth council shall be filled as they occur, and regular vacancies shall be filled by appointment in September or October of each year. The youth council shall hold at least one regular meeting per month with the option to meet more often as needed or desired. Public records of such meetings shall be kept by the office of city clerk. All meetings shall be public under Georgia law. Absences from three consecutive regular meetings of the Youth Council shall cause a member to be removed from their seat unless such absence is excused by a majority vote of the board with such excuse duly entered upon its minutes. The Youth Council shall have the duty and responsibility to evaluate and review problems facing youth in the city, facilitate neighborhood meetings with youth to discuss problems, needs, recommendations for community improvements, meet regularly with the mayor and city commissioners, share ideas and discuss issues, concerns and needed improvements, attend city commission meetings and participate in visions and goal sessions, present pre recommended projects and programs to the city commission and city manager of public projects and programs, assist in planning youth recreation activities, evaluate and advise the city commission and our city manager on issues forwarded to the Douglas Youth Council for advice. Often read for the first time at a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Douglas, Georgia on July 17, 2017, and read second time at the publication of the caption as required on the charter of Douglas, Georgia, and passed and ordained at a regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Commissioners of Douglas, Georgia on July 24, 2017, and this is ready for action. Outstanding. At this time, I will entertain a motion. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this. Um, as liaison commissioner for the Public Information um, Department, I'm very proud of this, and I think this will be great to second. hear from these 14 and 19 year olds. Okay. 14 through 19 year olds. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Outstanding. Next, we have items on the consent agenda, and as always, we'll have our city manager to read those items that we have placed on the consent agenda. 
All right. Thank you, Mayor. The first item is the uh, minutes from the July 17th meeting. The second item is the approval of a contract with Vic Suttles and Associates. The third item is a approval of a contract with a core engineer. And the last item is the reappointment to the Historic Preservation Commission of Mr. <coughs> Brenda Ville. Those are the items. Outstanding. At this time, I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I do not, according to my notes, we do not have any items that were brought forward uh, for discussion from the work session. So if you would, please strike item 11. Is that correct? We didn't have any, correct? Correct, sir. Next, we will have staff comments, and that will be from our public information director, Ms. Henderson. How are you doing? Doing well, you? I'm doing well. Just want to make some announcements. I want to remind um, everyone that the next residential junk drop-off day is coming up on August the 5th, and it will be held from 8 to 12 noon at the city pole yard. Just want to remind everyone to clean up around their home and take advantage of that date to just make everything a little cleaner. Um, the Martin Center is presenting a stage play on August the 12th um, called As For Me and My House. Uh, tickets are on sale now. Uh, the show will take place at 7 o'clock that day. The doors open at 6 p.m. Just want to encourage everyone to support this event. It's a great gospel stage play, and um, it re has received great reviews. And um, if they want more information, they can go to the Facebook page or our website for that information. Coming up at the Douglas Municipal Airport on August the 19th is the first, uh, what we hope will be the first annual um, Aviation Day fly-in. It's a fly-in with um, some private pilots, going to be some tours of the base, food, some activities for kids. So we just want everyone to come out and support the airport. And this event is organized and hosted by the uh, 63rd Preservation Society, the Air Base Preservation um, Committee, and um, the City of Douglas. Want to remind everyone to mark their calendars for the uh, South Georgia Barbecue and Outdoor Festival that's coming up on September the 8th and 9th. Downtown at Central Square Complex going to feature a barbecue competition, a uh, music concert, um, the Tucker Buck a motorcycle contest, I'm sorry, yeah, motorcycle uh, show and um, games, also a car show and um, all sorts of activities. Uh, we are full of food vendors, but we are still accepting vendors for um, artisans, um, any vendors related to hunting, fishing, and outdoors. We um, want everyone to call our office and get signed up. We still have some openings for that, and our office is the Public Information Office. We're located in the Asher Slater House, and our number is 383-0277, or you can go to our website and download more information. Um, Miss one at a Boulder City Clerk is going to come up to make an announcement about the National Night Out Against Crime and Beach Bash. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. We are excited. The City of Douglas is preparing for the first annual National Night Out Against Crime. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about National Night Out. Uh, it's an annual community building campaign that promotes police and community partnership and their neighborhood camaraderie to make our neighborhoods safer, more caring places to live. Um, the National Night Out, we're going to be having a lot of um, public safety, the fire department, the police, um, we have the sheriff department, we have a, a lot of people that's going to be coming, the vendors. Uh, the Beach Bash is going to start at 4 o'clock, and it'll be on the side of City Hall. After the Beach Bash, um, at 6.30, we have a gospel rapper by the name of B-Shock that's going to be here, along with the opening act um, from our Douglas own, Jay Spade. Um, those that know Jay Spade know he's um, one of the uh, Coffee High Trojans football players, along with uh, Pastor Spade's son, and he's going to be, uh, he's been uh, doing some Christian rap music as well, so he's going to open up as well. Um... We're going to be giving away two, four, actually four tablets to two boys and two girls. We're going to give away baskets to the adults, so don't think you, the children just can get to come. We're going to have something for the adults. We're going to be giving away some nice baskets. Um, and the church that has at least 10 in attendance, they'll be el eligible to put their name in. 
for a pizza party, $250 pizza party. So, and the first 180 kids that comes in to the concert will be giving out book bags um, along with school supplies in them as well. So we're having a great time. We have some uh, local community partners, uh, the Rotary, uh, Coca-Cola, Broadcast South, Papa John's, uh, Coffee Chrysler, uh, Walmart Store, Walmart Distribution, some banks. So we've been really having a good, um, our community has really been coming together to do this. So we encourage everyone to come out, enjoy the whole afternoon on August 1st, Tuesday, starting at, I said, 4 o'clock until. Whenever they kick us out to Central Square Gym. <laughs> so we hope to see everyone there. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, <coughs> excuse me. Next on the uh, agenda is comments from the uh, mayor and commissioners. Uh, we'll start off with Commissioner Pearson. Well, uh, before I start, Mayor, I just have a quick question, or maybe I missed it. Mm -hmm. Now, the fire department—they're doing something, or was it announced? Yeah, in concert with the night out, they're participating with that as well. Okay. Fire safety, any issues regarding that? But I, that, I think she's referring to the they're having the a family fun day. It's on a different oh, oh, day. Oh, 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 yeah. Only is I forgot about that. Yeah, that's a family fun day for. What that uh, it is. Right. Uh, yeah. Do we? Does it need to be announced? No. I think it's just for there. For, okay. Yeah. All right then. Yeah. I was I was about to announce it. So <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where the fire was yeah. coming. But anyway, that's yeah. fine. Thank you, Mayor. So now <laughs> I will proceed on with my coming. <laughs> um, because I'm still sometimes I think that I'm still the liaison for the um, for the fire department. <laughs> but I like to first uh, commend the Roper family. Uh, on the induction of your patriarch, Mr. Roper, into the Distinguished GMA uh, Hall of Fame. We all know uh, the great strides that Commissioner Roper made in this community, so I will not even begin to, to, to talk on them, but I'm just so very proud that I have an, uh, had an opportunity to serve with him. Uh, there's a lot of history uh, that he has, and I hope that you have captured some of that because he and I had planned to do a lot of work pertaining to uh, when the city had gotten redistricted and everything. And Jerome, you remember we had asked about some documents and I want to still try to do that because we want to try to capture our history while we can. So he's gone on now, but we need to do what we can to try to capture as much of that history as possible. Um, I want to give a, a brief update uh, about the homeless shelter. Today we had a, a coalition, the homeless shelter coalition today had a chance to travel to Valdosta, Georgia to look at uh, a shelter that they have there. It was very, very in, informative at, at LAMP, uh, that's the name of it. Uh, a couple of the volunteers who attended uh, that tour, they're present tonight, so I thank all of them, I thank them dearly for taking time out of their busy schedule to go to try to see what we could do here to try to help to better our community uh, with those those issues. But it was very informative and we'll give a formal report uh, for whomever might need it whenever we meet uh, next week, Mr. Jacobs. Um, the other thing that I have is on this past Friday, a comedy show was held at uh, Central Square Gym where Country Wayne Coley, as you stated, you were correct, uh, was, was, is, is the, was the comedian. And I had an opportunity to meet him, and he said his name is pronounced Coley. And as a matter of fact, I knew his brother from one of my prior employments. So I, at the end of the show, I was walking back to get a picture, and this guy just went to screaming, I know her, I know her. So uh, I walked on back, and I remember his face, but I didn't remember his name. But uh, it, was, it was just really nice. I enjoyed it, and I look forward to going to that stage play that's going to be performed at, uh, at the Martin Center as well. The last thing that I have is um, 
You know, I mentioned last week uh, appealing to uh, the community to try to do something to help our youth. And uh, Mr. City Manager and myself, we spoke about uh, trying to get together uh, something to work on, trying to do something for our youth. So, so that's going to be forthcoming. But I'd just like to say this. I received a call uh, today after I got back in town, and I was informed that um, the young man who, who was shot the other week, I think, hopefully, prayerfully, there is, if the report is correct, he seems to be making a little progress that he opened his eyes or something to that effect. But what I was called about is because the mother who has been by his side the entire time, she's having a little struggle because she's away from home. She, she needs help. So, you know, I am a passionate, sensitive person, so I said I would ask at our meeting tonight, anybody who would like to donate something to try to help her out with, with food, maybe uh, whatever she might need while she's away from home, uh, to uh, to please try to donate. Uh, a number that you can call is 38912-389-5408. Uh, Ms. Shana Grady, uh, so she will be able to try to help get some funds to Miss Michelle uh, Carter to help her out while she's away with her son. But most importantly, let's continue to pray that the young man lives as well as whomever might have been involved with it. Pray for them as well. Uh, you know, it's just so easy to get caught up if you're not very careful with your life. And so I'm just asking for prayers for everybody involved, not just their situation, but anybody else that's having an ordeal or a hard time with struggling with violence or whatever. Let, let, let's our community pray for our young folk. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Pierce. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I just hope everybody will uh, pay attention to the uh, city around about them and uh, clean up and, and spruce up and make our city a better looking place for people to visit. And uh, I thank you. And uh, since uh, Madam took up most of my time, I'm going <laughs> to tell you I relinquish the rest of my time. Outstanding. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to emphasize on something that was brought up on last week about the golf cars and the four wheelers and riding around today. I don't know what you call these little hoverboards. Hoverboards. They have started with those. To my citizen <laughs> of Coffee County, it is against the law to have golf cars, four wheelers, and those center boards or whatever you call them. You know, they the kids are getting so now they are holding the traffic up oh. with the golf cart. It's about school times and. Every year, seems like something happened. This year, we want to try to avoid that happening this year, you know. So, parents, it is against the law to have these toys, uh, whatever you want to call them, on the city uh, streets. property, <laughs> streets and things, because um, uh, uh, they are unsafe. You don't have no brake lights on them, no nothing on them, no tag. So please, ma'am, please, sir, monitor your kids. Make sure they stay off these golf cars and four-wheelers and things. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. Good job. Yeah, I, I'd like to... Um, Mr. McNeil. Thank you. Tina. Thank you, sir. Yes. Chateau. I would like to um, remind golf cart drivers that you have to be 16 years old or over. To, to drive one anywhere. Am I right, Mr. Jacobs, that that's a motorized vehicle? And But again, the city, the city streets, we don't have it yet so that, you, so that they're um, legal on city streets. So I want to encourage everybody to be patient with us. To, we're going to look at some things that some other communities are doing to make our safe, to have them registered, to have them um, so that they are, you know, um, that there's some accountability there and that there's no liability to those of you who
choose to do that at some point. But we want to come back to y'all with a proposal and um, or to come back with a, something that's a safe format for that. Now, we may not have it for hoverboards or we may not have it for skateboards and things like that at this right. point. But yeah. if Commissioner Durham, if y'all see him on a hoverboard, let us know, okay? I'm yeah. trying to get the right one. Let us know. But I'm going to ride it on the sidewalk. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, <laughs> well, you're I'm not going to ride the hoverboard. No, no, okay. So I'm afraid of him, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I just want to get this cleared up. You can ride the hoverboards, but not in the street, but on the sidewalk. I'm not going to answer that. No, I'm just asking. I'm asking this for clarification. I, 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 because it's not a... Uh, uh, yeah. Well, sidewalks are also a public right-of-way. Yeah. And, and they're, they're not established for... Okay. that they're established yeah. for access so they can't ride them at all and and in regards to i know in a their lot driveway, of folks in their personal driveway ride yeah bicycles on sidewalks but actually bicycles are really not purposeful for for riding so 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 really i would think hoverboards would be restricted in regards to that to your driveway yeah, and stuff, so, so. yeah they, they should so be on personal too. property in yeah. relationship to yeah. that yeah. so yeah. we're gonna be anyway hmm. um <laughs> Um, it won't take me long, Commissioner Moore. But um, um, getting back to what we was going, what we was doing. Um, we want to make sure everybody, um, please, you know, stay cool, and um, please, um, keep your temperature on a great temperature in your house, your thermostat. Um, you know, cause you know, you know, it's getting hot, and the more you decrease, the more that bill gonna go up. So. You know, you want to keep cool and everything like that. And also, I want to um, say to our um, landlords, yeah. um, if you are evicting someone mm -hmm. and you clean out the house, please make sure you pick up the all necessary furniture right. that that's um, left in there. Please dispose it before putting it on the sidewalks and putting it in the yard because we have to still beautify our city and everything. So we ask asking that if you're a landlord and if you're cleaning out the house, please get rid of the stuff instead of placing it out there on the side of the road. Um, because I have received several calls on Bryan Street about some stuff that's landlord down there. And we want to keep our city beautiful. And then we want to keep our streets beautiful. And also, like Ms. Wanella said, we want you to bring out all your kids on August the 1st for the beach bash and um, the night out, the national night out, because I will be there, yeah, we yours out. truly. On a and um, no, I can't be on a hoverboard, <laughs> no bicycle, no whatever. But anyway, <laughs> but I'm, uh, um, I'm going to be there. But we were asking that y'all bring your children out so we can have a great participation. And not only your children, but your churches, like she say, they can get that free pizza party. If they have ten or more, if they are drunk, uh, for the for the youth, if you have if they have ten or more, I mean ten or more, uh -huh. youth, they got to be drawn though. They got to be drawn. They can enter into the draw into the drawing. Right. Uh -huh. um, they qualify for a pizza party and also the four tablets, two girls, two boys. Uh -huh. I think that's a great thing. It but is. we got to bring the children. Uh -huh. Everybody always say we don't have nothing to do in Douglas. Bring your children. Bring your children, bring them out. I mean, it's going to be different vendors there. No excuses saying they're hungry. It's going to be great. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? <laughs> Time to spare. <laughs> all right. Uh, also, uh, when uh, Commissioner Durham said something about, you know, it's being hot and stuff like that, remember if you're outside playing and you've been out there for an extended period of time, if you're not sweating, that's a problem. If you are not sweating, mm -hmm. that is a problem. One of the rules we used to use when I was in the military, every hour on the hour, drink at least uh, 16 ounces to 32 ounces of water, whether you need it or not. My next thing is the um, those motorized vehicles. We keep saying about the golf carts, the four-wheelers, motorcycles, things like that. We are saying this uh, before something happens. Yeah, that's right. Safety. Because these vehicles are not designed uh, to 
operate on the city streets. They do not meet the, uh, the safety specifications. They don't travel fast enough. And sometimes going too slow causes accidents. Sure does. Uh, the next thing is my sister, I normally don't look at my phone, but my sister's been texting me about, she works over at the correctional facility over in Nichols. They are struggling trying to fill positions for security officers, I believe. They have been on a campaign for the last two months. They were up to about 70 or 80 slots that they needed to fill. Now I believe they're somewhere between 30 and 50 positions. And you just have to be 18. So mom, dad, if that Yahoo done graduate and had made up their mind about what they're gonna be doing, on next Monday, out at the Georgia Department of Labor, across from Walmart Distribution, they're going to be having a job fair, and they're trying to fill 30 to 50 positions. Starting salary is $12.50. Mm. You have to go off the train. And one of the challenges that we have, and please pay particular attention to this, it is, it is very difficult and almost impossible to obtain a job these days if you do not have that high school diploma right. or equivalent, if you have a criminal background record, and if you cannot pass a drug test. So those are your three strikes. So you got to stay within the rules of employment, and a number of employers are going to this type of standard. So I ask you, Next Monday, Department of Labor, $12.50 an hour, 30 to 50 positions, must have a high school diploma, must be able to pass a urinalysis test, and a criminal background check. At that point, that is all I have. I will entertain a motion to... Yes. In discussing the golf carts and the four-wheelers, I need to mention something that I don't think a lot of parents think about when they furnish their underage children a golf cart or a four-wheeler or any other motorized vehicle to ride on the city streets. If there is an accident and someone is injured, someone is killed, somebody's vehicle is damaged, the liability rests on the parent that furnished that vehicle to that child. So if you furnished your child a golf cart, and you have another child on that golf cart fall off in the street and that child run over by another vehicle and killed, mm. the parents are responsible for the wrongful death of that child. Mm -mm. And what Ooh. about the, uh, clarify for us about those other things they were talking about. What other, the hoverboard? Hoverboard. Hoverboards, <coughs> if, you, if, if, it, if you injure someone else mm -hmm. during your use of that hoverboard, mm -hmm. the parent is responsible for the acts of the minor child. Mm -hmm. But can they ride them on the sidewalk? I know they don't need to be in the road with them. Legally, they're not supposed to be on, be the, on the sidewalk. No, okay. No, okay. No. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Motion. Oh, I love that. I love that. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We stand adjourned. Yes, sir. Could you get him a little? Mr. Jacobs.